Good morning, Europe. It's Monday, the 28th of May, a brand new week. Our headlines for you. Italy crisis. New elections loom as the president blocks the formation of a Eurosceptic government. Making history, Ireland votes to abolish its abortion ban and we'll cross to Dublin to talk more about what this means. And over in the Cuba social media news desk. The North is next, that's what campaigners say. We're looking at those demands for Northern Ireland to now change its abortion laws. From on to off to on yet again, the whiplash diplomacy of US-North Korea relations. And a dramatic rescue, the man being called a real-life Spider-Man in France after he scaled a building to save a child. Thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Now our top story, a stunning political twist in Italy's drama. The man chosen to lead the next government has stepped down and there are calls for the president to be impeached. Now Giuseppe Conte, he threw in the towel just four days after he was approved as prime minister, quitting after President Mattarella rejected this man, Paolo Savona, as economy minister. Savona, known as a Eurosceptic, had threatened to pull Italy from the Euro. Now, this all raises the specter of a constitutional crisis and fresh, fresh elections. Our correspondent, Claudio Lavanga, is following it all for us in Rome. Claudio, where do we stand now then and what happens next? Well, Tessa, the president really has two choices. One call for new elections, which at this point could be held as early as September. Two, install a caretaker government with ministers and a prime minister chosen by him. And that, the latter, seems to be the choice that he's going with, because here at the presidential palace behind me, he's already summoned this morning Carlo Cottarelli. He is a former, uh, a former official at the International Monetary Fund. He was also in charge of spending uh, review here in the previous government during the uh, recession. So it seems like he may be uh, giving to him uh, the role of prime minister for his caretaker government. But even if, even if that's uh, the case, and that will have it confirmed later on, well, then that government should really win a vote of confidence in the lower house of parliament and in the senate before it can actually rule and that is unlikely to happen at least if you listen to the reaction by Matteo Salvini and Luigi Di Maio the leaders of the two political parties that have got the majority in both houses well they both said that yesterday's decision by Mattarella was an attack on democracy that he was bowing to pressure from abroad Salvini went on to say that Italy is not a colony that uh, it's not a slave to Germany or France whatever uh, that means and Salvini and Di Maio went uh, one step further by even calling for an impeachment of the president, something, something that has never happened in the history of the Republic. Now, you can do that if the president is found guilty of high treason and an attack to the constitutions, neither of which seem to have happened uh, yesterday. Now, they, they are both leading the charge of a campaign of hatred, essentially, um, against the president of the Republic, uh, with some people that is spreading like wildfire on social media, with some people even calling for even posting death threats against the president, Tessa. All right, thank you for that. Claudio Lavanga, live in Rome. Now, the political uncertainty in Italy has set the country on a collision course with the EU. Now, for more on that, our correspondent Alistair Sanford joins me now live in the studio. Now, this is really giving the EU and markets real jitters, isn't it? Absolutely, Tessa. I mean, but for now, I have to say that the markets are, are, are reassured. The euro has, has bounced back from a six-month low uh, overnight on, here in Europe. And on, on Asian markets, the euro has risen against the dollar. Um, analysts say there, re, there is relief for now that this, uh, the prospect of a, a eurosceptic populist government in Europe has, has receded. Uh, the issue, however, is going to set is set to dominate the markets this week. Uh, and in the medium and longer term, the prospect of a constitutional crisis now in Italy means the outlook on the markets is extremely shaky. The polls suggest that the populists uh, look set to benefit from this chaos. Uh, and the choice of Carlo Cottarelli, formerly IMF, uh, to lead the government suggested that's a calming factor for the markets for now. But for heaven's sake, he's known as Mr. Scissors. This is a godsend to the populace. And it's a real kind of head-on collision between economic orthodoxy uh, and, uh, and, and, and politics. Uh, Anti-democratic, the populace would say. So it looks like we would be in for a, a period of market turbulence. Um, Moody's have said that uh, they may downgrade the country's financial uh, sovereign debt. There are still heavy risks linked to the Italian situation. Throw into that the wider situation in the Eurozone with Spain looking fragile too, uh, and things look uh, decidedly shaky at the moment. Indeed it does. Thank you for that, uh, Alistair Sanford.
Now, they are calling him the real-life Spider-Man. Now, he has risked his life to save a four-year-old child in France, and he will be meeting President Emmanuel Macron. For more on that, let's cross over to Alex in the cube. Alex. Absolutely, Tessa. It is like something straight out of the pages of a comic book novel. A man scales a building and saves a child. Just check out this video. <laughs> Scaling the front of the building using nothing other than his own upper body strength to rescue a dangling child. This video was filmed Saturday in Paris and instantly this man, this unknown man, was being hailed as a hero. So who is this man? Who is this man they're calling the Spider-Man? This is that man, identified here by a journalist in Paris. He is an undocumented migrant from Mali, uh, that's the report anyway, that he is called Mamadou Kassama. He's been nicknamed the Spider-Man after scaling that building. And the mayor of Paris called him to say, huge congratulations uh, and thank you very much for saving this child. And also saying in another tweet that Mamadou was saying he wants to build a new life in France. As we heard from um, Tessa there, that he will be meeting President Emmanuel Macron later today. This man who was unknown, undocumented, now a face. That video, one of those videos, has been shared more than seven million times. The Spider-Man will meet the president and you'll be able to have all the latest news on this on Euronews' website. So do stay tuned and let us know your thoughts using hashtag the cube. Thanks for that, uh, Alex. Well, after a week of diplomatic ups and downs, the U.S. and North Korea are once again committed to a historic summit. And North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has expressed his, quote, fixed will for it to go ahead. And the U.S. has sent a team to the secretive state in preparation. NBC News' Bill Neely has this story. First came the surprise summit between Kim Jong-un and South Korea's President Moon. Now the surprise visit, an American delegation arriving here at the same border crossing and travelling into North Korea. NBC News has learned it's led by US Ambassador Sung Kim, who's negotiated with North Korea before. He'll meet Cho Son Hui, the North's Deputy Foreign Minister, who undermined talks last week by calling Mike Pence a political dummy. They'll prepare for a summit that was pronounced dead, but seems alive again. It's uh, moving along very nicely. So we're looking at June 12th in Singapore. That hasn't changed. The momentum was boosted by a Korean summit of hugs and smiles. Kim Jong-un asking for the meeting and, according to President Moon, committing to a successful summit with President Trump. And they want a peace treaty because it validates them as a nuclear weapon state. It ensures that Trump won't attack. Yeah. And most importantly, it means money. North Korea's state media says Kim has determined the summit with Trump should happen. Everyone's saying they want it for their own reasons. But the problems of trust and what they all mean by denuclearization are still far from resolved. Bill Neely reporting there. Now, a theme park in southwestern Germany has reopened after a fire engulfed part of the site. Plumes of smoke rose into the sky after a warehouse on site caught fire. Seven firefighters were injured and thousands of visitors were forced to leave. The park was able to reopen last night. In the U.S., the flash floods in Maryland have prompted dramatic rescues. And in some places, the water rose higher than the first floor of some buildings. And just outside Baltimore, some vehicles were swept through the streets. Five people have died and at least 40 are missing after a cyclone hit Yemen and Oman. One city recorded three years' worth of rainfall in a single day. Tourist beaches were deserted as foam whipped up off the sea with winds up to around 180 kilometers per hour. And still to come for you on Good Morning Europe, could your plastic drinking straws become a thing of the past? Well, the EU launches a war on waste. Plus, over in the cube... Yes, here in our social media centre, we're looking at those demands for Northern Ireland to follow its neighbour and change its abortion law. But first, here's your weather. You're watching Good Morning Europe. Our top story, Italy's been plunged into political turmoil with the explosive collapse of efforts to form a coalition government. This after the president vetoed the nomination of a Eurosceptic economy minister. Now, much of Ireland erupted in celebration after an overwhelming majority voted to scrap strict abortion laws. 
change is afoot in the once deeply socially conservative Catholic nation. Two out of three voters backed change with clear majorities in every country except one. Well, the focus is now turning to Northern Ireland, where abortion laws are much more restrictive than the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, but before that, we will head over to Dublin, where our correspondent Vincent McAvinney is gauging reactions to this transformative vote. Good to see you there, Vinny. Uh, Vincent, what has been the change? And where is Ireland going now? Well, good morning, Tessa from Dublin. I'm here at the Savita Halapanava Memorial, and I think this place really explains what's happened here in Ireland. Savita, who you can see here behind me, was a 31-year-old dentist from India. She and her husband became pregnant, but she tragically died in 2012 in a Galway hospital. She suffered a septic miscarriage. She repeatedly requested an abortion, but because a fetal heartbeat was detected, that request was denied, with a midwife telling her Ireland is a Catholic country. And many people here believe tragic stories like Savita's and others that have been shared are the reason this change has been made. Many people have come here. This mural only was erected last week, but they've left these messages on the boards saying that apologizing to Savita, but saying that her sacrifice has helped so many other women. This is the story of what happened here this weekend. An estimated 40,000 expats made the journey home to Ireland this weekend to vote in the country's abortion referendum. With the polls neck and neck, no one casting their ballot on Friday was confident in making a prediction. But that night, the exit poll shocked everyone, predicting 69% voted to repeal the ban. In the morning, as the votes began to be counted across the country, the opposition campaign conceded defeat early. Alva Smith, the co-director of the repeal campaign, said it was a victory for all Irish women. We really did ourselves proud today because people stood up, voted yes, and by voting yes, they were saying women's lives really, truly matter absolutely equally. Irish Health Minister Simon Harris promised to get to work introducing a new abortion law as soon as possible. I now intend to go to the government on Tuesday at our Cabinet meeting.